Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Our Gospel text is Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. It's the story of Mary's visit to Elizabeth. But it points to something very basic, if you like, almost primitive in us human beings. It is our inclination to connect, to gather, to be together. It is not surprising that in the incarnation, when God enters fully into the human condition, the gathering becomes crucial to the incarnation. It is at the very heart of the incarnation. Earlier in chapter 1 of Luke's Gospel, Mary receives the angel who tells her that she will be visited from on high by the power of the Spirit of God. Nothing is impossible to God. She is to do what she is asked to do, and she says, let it happen. The next move is for her to go off and visit Elizabeth, to gather with Elizabeth, to share this news, or to be part of what the Holy Spirit is doing. The two of them come together, and the Spirit leads Elizabeth to rejoice with Mary when she enters the room. And at that point, John the Baptist, still in his mother's womb, leapt for joy. He too is part of the gathering, the coming together, the belonging in this spirit-led, spirit-shaped movement, this gathering. Now, interestingly enough, the Greek word for gathering is ekklesia, It was a common word in the time of Jesus in the first century Greek culture. It applied principally to the gatherings of the local demos, the local people to address political and social issues. However, when the first followers of the way use the word, and it is used, for example, in Matthew 16, where Peter is to be the one, the rock on whom the ecclesia is built. That's the word that is used. It is a word that carries with it a wealth of tradition. In the Septuagint, it was used to translate the Hebrew kahal Yahweh, the people gathering because they are called by God, they are chosen by God, they are God's people. These are the people of God assembling. The gathering, the Kahal Yahweh, is the ecclesia. It's not surprising that the first followers of the way, those Messianic Jews, those people who came to be called Christians, should use that word to describe their gathering. They're being gathered by the Spirit of God introduced to the world, the Spirit of fire and power by Jesus. Assuming that is what church is, because that is the English translation of ecclesia. Church is gathering. It's probably better to think of church as more of a verb than a noun. It's an action word. Like all human gathering, is it alive? It's alive, it's dynamic, it's evolving, and therefore requires the participants to listen, to pay attention, to be conscious and alert and aware. In other words, to journey together. This is not about an individual or a group thing. This is about a spirit-led thing. Spirit of God shaped thing. So if we are to be part of that, we have to submit to the promptings of the Spirit. And if we are to submit to the promptings of the Spirit, we must listen. If we are to be a gathering, we must listen together, journeying together. Interestingly enough, and very significantly, Pope Francis has introduced us to a new word, one that perplexes and 
uh, indeed provoked some resistance in people. The word is synodality. But it's a new way of stating a very, very old thing. Synodality means literally journeying together. That's at the heart of being church. In fact, Pope Francis says synodality is a constitutive element of the church. That is, the church cannot be church without synodality, without this journeying together. It is crucial to our being church. Imagine a family, if you will, that doesn't listen to each other, doesn't journey together. What will become of that family? At best, their gatherings will be superficial. They can be quite destructive. Ecclesia, gathering, listening, journeying together, constitutive of the church, what makes us church, in fact, what allows us to be made church by the Holy Spirit of God. Pope Francis, in addressing the Synod on the 50th anniversary of the foundation of the Synod in 2015, said to the bishops gathered there, a synodal church is a listening church. Knowing that listening is more than feeling. It is a mutual listening in which everyone has something to hear and learn. Faithful people, the College of Bishops, the Bishop of Rome. We are one in listening to others. And all are listening to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. To know what the Spirit is saying to the churches. At the moment in Australia, we are are in a critical point of trying to recover that as a practical reality in the life of the church. I suspect we're a fair way away from making it a practical part of our being church. But it is absolutely essential that we do recover it, which means a capacity to move beyond our respective anxieties, fears, personal projects, what we think should happen. There's a lot of listening and journeying together. There's a lot of learning to be ecclesia, spirit-led, spirit-shaped church.